This is Curative Design, and I'm Ruin Matthews. Follow Control Houston, uh, 55 hours, 47 minutes. Welcome back to part two of a three-part series of Curative Design dedicated to the Apollo moon missions and the watches that were selected for them. In episode one, we set the stage for the Apollo moon missions, as well as how the Omega Speedmaster Pro was ultimately selected to be the official watch of the Apollo missions. In this episode, we'll explore some of the ramifications of that decision to select the Speedmaster Pro as the official watch of the Apollo moon missions. Let's get started. So why is a reliable timepiece so important for space exploration? Well, Apollo 13 was meant to be a routine, if there is such a thing, space mission to further explore another region of the moon. A critical module failure resulted in the craft being crippled with some of its life support systems being compromised. In the Herculean effort to bring the three-man crew home back safely, a collaborative effort was launched between the astronauts in the module and the ground crew in Houston Command. What's this? That's what they gotta make. This is beautifully rendered in the Ron Howard film, Apollo 13, which I wax lyrical about in another episode. In the midst of the discussion between the crew and ground control in Houston, it was determined that the re-entry angle of attack of the command module would cause it to glance off the atmospheric surface if not corrected. This could be prevented by a precisely timed 14 second burn to correct the angle. And with electricity compromised, this would have to be done manually using one of the astronauts' watches. Enter astronaut Jack Swigert's Omega Speedmaster Pro. That was the task, and that is exactly what they were able to accomplish. In the lengthy post-mission analysis, this maneuver was identified as one of the key elements that resulted in the safe return of these three men. NASA was so very grateful to the proper functioning of their astronauts' watches that they bestowed on Omega, the watch company, their highest award for excellence in life safety, the Silver Snoopy Award. Now, when I first came across mention of this award, I was intrigued as to its origins. After the Mercury and Gemini missions, NASA wanted a way to recognize their various teams of employees and contractors for instances of outstanding contributions to safety. Unique about this recognition was that only an astronaut could bestow it, as the pin given, a silver rendition of the character Snoopy from the Peanuts comic, had to be taken into space and back by that same astronaut. Interestingly, Charles M. Schultz, the creator of the Peanuts comic, was a huge fan of the NASA space program and even drew all of the promotional art for the award for free. I suppose what I love most about this award is the fact that it represents the astronauts themselves looking back and recognizing that their achievements are dependent on many hundreds of teams working together and in unison. It made me wonder why we in healthcare didn't have a similar type of recognition given by our medical staffs to those non-clinical members of the team, without whom our facilities, environment of care, ORs, you name it, would simply just stop running safely. Definitely something worth looking into. In fact, here's a picture of the EMT Ralph Brown being given a Silver Snoopy Award by astronaut Daniel Levas for improving EMS services care at White Sands Test Facility in 2007. Anyhow, it's fair to say that 1970 was a good year for Omega. Not only had their reference watch been selected as the official watch of the Apollo moon missions, but they had also, because of the flawless functioning of that timepiece during key maneuvers of the Apollo 13 rescue mission, earned NASA's highest honor in life safety, the Silver Snoopy Award. It's also fair to say that many watches were sold on the strength of the Apollo 13 experience. It was a time of great celebration, adulation, and let's be real, marketing for the watchmaker Omega. All of this was, however, about to come crashing down only a few short months later. In the next and final episode of the series, you'll find out what happens and why the watch I wear for my daily use isn't a Speedmaster or even an Omega. And yet, the watch I wear is also considered by some as the unofficial watch of the Apollo moon missions. Where did this dark horse come from? Tune in and find out. This is Curative Design, and I'm Ruin Matthews.